Um, the last one is a, kind of a great one to close out on. After I'm hit by an attack, I feel like my mind just races to press a button. I'm like, I'm hit, I'm hit. So I'll like buffer a nair or an air dodge typically. Yep. Uh, I, I mean, I suppose it's like good to be retaliating when you're being attacked or trying to be escaping, uh, rushing mm -hmm. to escape like the next hit. But I kind of find I'm performing these actions just like, it's like a reflex, it's yeah. mindless. I'm not really thinking about like what I should do. I'm just jerking like my knee because um, yeah. I've been hit. And yeah. I, I think this is an area of gameplay. It would really benefit me to have more of a mindful approach to what actions I'm taking on the receiving end of like a string of combos. So I wanted to hear from, you know, somebody who has some expertise in this area. What's on your mind when like you're being hit by a string of attacks? What is the choice frontier you kind of see in front of you? So the first thing I'm looking at is what combo are they going for? And do I know the combo itself to know if the true, if it's actually going to be a true combo or not? Because if someone's trying to go for something that's safe, it's full hop up air with Captain Falcon and he's holding forward and goes to where a double jump knee, full hop up air into double jump knee is not true, for example. So in that situation, I would air dodge out of the combo, right? If he's going for something that's going to, let's say, it doesn't have to be Captain Falcon, but let's say someone's trying to juggle me or do a, a vertical combo and I'm not going to get sent off stage, then I will happily use my my air dodge, my double jump, or an aerial to try and get out of that situation. If I'm going to be carried off the stage, I'm definitely not going to waste my jump because if I do happen to use my jump during a true combo, it can come out frame one and I don't get any impact from that jump. So I stay in place, now I don't have a jump and I'm sent off stage. So if I know where I'm going to get sent from a particular combo, that's going to dictate to me what I'm going to try and do, okay? So also if a combo is like, let's say, up tilt, up tilt, up tilt as Mithra, and I know that that's not true, if I know that someone's going to mash away on up tilt, I'm probably going to try and air dodge to get out of that. I maybe get a foresight and come down and reverse them if we're both in the ditto or something like that. But also, if I use an air dodge and I get out, I'm going to pay attention to that and basically add it to a checklist in my, my I guess, subconscious to say, if I get out of this setup with an air dodge in the future, if I see the same thing again, I'm going to try it again to make sure that they are paying attention. But if I do air dodge and they don't go up tilt, up tilt, up tilt, they go up tilt, up tilt, let me air dodge, and then they go for like an up smash or a late up tilt. We will consider this else. a stale counter play. Yes. Like, and then okay. from okay, there, I will clever. now switch it up again. So if I have the situation ever happen again, I'm not going to air dodge again. I'm not going to jump out of the situation or I'm going to come down aggressive with an aerial since they're going to stand there and do nothing expecting me to come down with a air dodge. Okay, so you're you're cataloging like the, everything. So one, you know the matchup, you know their, uh, you know like what kind of things they like to go for and string together. You're kind of cataloging what string they've gone for. You're cataloging what, uh, what your reaction was and what their reaction to your reaction was. Yeah. And, oh, damn, okay. That, that is a, a, lot. a lot more than, <laughs> than press the button, then press the buttons, yeah. press the buttons, quick, hurry. Yeah, man. <laughs> I like that. That gives me a lot. That gives me a lot to work on and like theory craft on when mm -hmm. I'm like trying to learn a matchup and figure out like, okay, the, this move is super unsafe and I can uh, punish it with like an aerial. I'll have time or uh, best I can do is a dodge. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. So I guess another way to look at the game with regards to that is never play smash with the intent to hope for the best. If you start hoping yeah. for the best, that's when you get killed. Like, a lot of a lot of whiffed uh, F smashes as Pyra has, has managed to train, <laughs> train that hope yeah. out of me. Uh, it's like, man, wouldn't it just be lovely if they just waltzed right into this? Yeah, if it just, <laughs> if it just worked for no reason. Like, that's the thing. It's like, even with up tilts, or not up tilts, with uh, air dodging out of stuff or nearing out of stuff, it's like, I, I'm just going to air dodge every time and hope they just don't catch on. It's like, if you're playing against a bad player, genuinely, then maybe they actually won't catch on. But if you're playing against anyone that's even remotely competitive, they're going to catch on. They're going to start charging things. Or they're going to start getting re-grabs. Or they're going to start going for like Lightning Buster or whatever their move is for them to get a bigger punish than just an up tilt. Oh, yeah. I was getting those foresights until I wasn't getting those foresights anymore. <laughs> oh, 100%. Right? So if I know it's always air dodging out of everything, that means you're not going to attack me. And you're also, you also have to land because you can't air dodge and jump at the same time with like tons of height straight up. So if you do air dodge, also you have point. to land, right? So if I see my opponent air dodging, then I can try to like, I can like anticipate an air dodge and position myself so that I can just kind of like lather and repeat something right after. Yep. Okay. That's so that, so I can also, not only should I really be like trying to do my combo, but like, watch how my opponent is handling getting okay. yeah you have to watch everything right it's the same thing like if i'm comboing someone so to do it the uh, on the other side i guess is if i'm comboing someone the number one thing i'm paying attention to is did they lose their jump during this combo because if someone goes for an attack and they hit me obviously the combo is over if they go for an air dodge and they get out obviously the combo is over but if someone loses their jump you can still hit them 
and the combo can still continue. So if I see I'm carrying someone off the stage and they lose their jump while being carried off stage, I'm now going to go ultra aggressive off stage to chase them because I know that they don't have a jump and I do have a jump, if that's the situation. There's few places they can run, and so yeah, it's time to kick it. Oh, they can't. Yeah, most of them can't do anything. Most characters they can they can literally just up be your side to the ledge, and that's it. Some characters like Pikachu can kind of go wherever he wants. Or if it's a Game and Watch, he's super fast on his up B, so that's very hard to catch. Um, if it's a character with multiple jumps, obviously they have more jumps to to deal with. But if it's like a character like Krom or Roy or Cloud or Marth Lucina, whoever Donkey uh, Kong, Donkey is Kong, scary without his jump. Oh yeah, any anybody who has like a standard double jump and up b as their recovery if they lose their jump it's completely on i'm out there we're getting there we're gonna go for even if it's like a trade of some sort or maybe it could be a spike or a fair just literally anything at all i'm throwing out something to just tap them away because two things if they don't even realize that they don't have a jump they're gonna just like panic at the bottom of the blast when it's way too late or if they know they don't have a jump and they can't defend themselves because if they trade then they're gonna get gimped and that's their only option if you just don't do anything because you weren't aware of the fact that they had no jump and they were you aware missed an of opportunity that, oh yeah you could have killed them at like 25 or 40 or whatever watching for jumps is something that i've i've improved at i think there's a lot of ones i like i miss or i, I like you know don't uh, play it correctly when I do catch that they don't have a jump. But I really think you've you've uh, unlocked a big piece of the puzzle with how they're reacting to the way I'm reacting to kind of what's going on in this kind of this kind of cataloging, kind of downloading your opponent as, as you're playing them. Mm. That, that's really uh, that's really useful because I think you've given me some some a framework to I think have more components of the gameplay to be to be on my mind. Of course. Um, when as, as i'm like getting more savvy with the the controls and i'm kind of starting to not have to think as hard uh about that stuff it's nice to know like where my mind could be uh with that space starting to like uh fill out and yeah the thing is like smash or any anything that's a 1v1 of any sort it's a conversation it could be a conversation with you and a salesperson it could be a conversation with you and your parents or you and a significant other it doesn't really matter it's the fact that when you say something hopefully <laughs> you pay attention to what they say back <laughs> so you can respond so with something that makes sense if it's an argument sometimes people get wild and they don't care about anything you say they argue the way that they do they're basically mashing insults in that case right yo yo that's some <laughs> that's that's that, that's some thoughts <laughs> yes sir bro put it on a t-shirt i don't know something but that's just what it is. You want to make sure that you're paying attention, listening and responding appropriately with what makes sense uh, in the context of Smash or even in the conversation too, right? Like if you're trying to get yeah, someone... Respond to somebody's reaction. Don't just like, yeah, mash your opinion. <laughs> exactly, right? If, if you just do like what you it. want, there's, there's also like, there's like a hierarchy of uh, authority in some cases. Like in some, if it's a parent talking to a kid, the kid could be entirely right. But the kid, the parent said, I don't care. I have super armor on my, on my opinion. So <laughs> <laughs> there is that. Uh, uh, I'm I'm K Rule. I got a big belly, so uh, it's yeah. My, so it's my agenda. <laughs> yeah, I get to do whatever I want. Exactly. But yeah, in the case of Smash, no matter what you do, like don't ever think, oh, I did my combo and then that was that. It's like notice if they di in, notice if they waste their jump, notice if they get out of the combo by air dodging away at the end and actually put themselves off stage. Notice what they do. Um, are they mashing an attack to get out? So some some players will even try to go for an attack that is not a combo breaking move, but it hurt box shifts uh, just to try and get them out of the way. So now you can switch up your attack to instead of go for like a skinny vertical hitbox that not, might not reach, you now go for a back air or a forward air with a, with a wider hitbox because if someone goes for a falling up air, they're not really defending themselves. They're trying to slip out of a combo versus actually hit you. So you can even see that oh. kind of stuff and then say, okay, this is this is your answer to my proposal. Now I have a rebuttal or a retort like, to what I you noticed, just did. I noticed, so here's a rebuttal. Like, oh man, yeah. okay, okay. 